Shoot. I was having some issues there. All right. I am here with you today to work on P103 and P104 for module 11, lesson two. So it was a pretty straightforward lesson today. Let me share my screen with you. And I believe I need to <clears throat> change my camera view here from our class to my desk. There it is. All right. <clears throat> and then you're going to see, as I get everything straightened out, this is your paper for today. All right. So I'm going to have some questions like we did on the lesson when I was not in class. I'm going to stop the video every once in a while with some questions to make sure that you're not just writing down answers, but you are going through and doing the work so that you're learning how to do this lesson. All right. So let's see. How is this looking? It's okay, I guess. I don't know. Let's look because I'm just it now. Oh, I messed with it too much. Let's leave it right there. A hiking trail has a marker every one fourth of a mile. How many markers are on the trail? Write a division equation to model the situation, then write a related multiplication equation. I'm going to move myself down here into the corner. Make my screen a little bit bigger. All right, I think that looks better if it'll stay there. Okay, so we're using this information on the sign over here. We can see that it is an eight mile trail. So if we have eight miles and there's a marker every one fourth of a mile, we have eight miles divided by those one fourth markers is going to equal it says how many markers? I'm going to use M for our answer, a fourth of a mile. So it's not asking us to draw a model, is it? Write a division equation to model the situation. So this is our model. Then we're going to write the related multiplication. So we have keep, change, flip, and we can solve and we would know it's 32 markers on this trail. All right, just that straightforward for us today. Number two, Jesse uses about one third of a pound of chalk for each gymnastics tournament he attends. For how many tournaments will seven pounds of chalk last? Write a division equation to model the situation. Again, then write the related multiplication equation. So he's got a third of a pound of chalk and he wants to see how long seven pounds will last if he uses a third of a pound for each tournament. So he has seven whole pounds that he's dividing into thirds to equal the pounds of chalk. I'll use a P for that. There's our division equation. The related multiplication, seven times three equals 21. How many, oh, I'm sorry, it's tournaments, not pounds. 21 tournaments. Should I change this to a T for tournaments? Our answer said how many tournaments could he use, could he um, use that for? All right, just that easy. Don't let that look like a plus sign, that's a T. All right, related multiplication equations. Let's use our keep, change, flip. Keep, change, flip. N equals 45. Here, it's written backwards. We do the same thing. Our answer will equal keep, change, flip, which is going to be 24. Same thing. We could even do keep, change, flip, and equal another 24. Good. Jessica uses a number line to represent the division of a whole number by a unit fraction. What division equation could rep be represented by this number line? So she has a whole number divided by a unit fraction. So we know a whole number and it's going to be divided by a unit fraction. So our whole number, I'll use a W and a unit fraction, I'll use an F for that denominator. Remember unit fraction means it has a one in the numerator. So our equation could be, what would our whole number be if we're looking at this number line? 
our whole numbers go to three divided by, how much is each whole divided into? One, two, three, four, five. So they were divided into fifths, which would equal our answer N. And then we could do three divided by one fifth equals, if each of them have five parts, five, 10, 15. N equals 15. <clears throat> Number seven might be a little more challenging. It's a stem. The time it takes a planet to spin around its axis is called the rotation period. It takes about one day for Earth to complete a rotation. Each time Earth completes one rotation, Saturn completes about half of its rotation. How many rotations has Earth made in 15 Saturn days? What would be our division expression here if we have Saturn takes about half, makes half of its rotation. So Earth has made 15 rotations. Saturn has only gone half. So we have 15 rotations. If we're going to find out how many rotations Earth has made in 15 Saturn days, 15 days divided by that one half equals the number of rotations. So Saturn has made 15, Saturn, ha, I'm sorry, Earth has made 15, oh, I've got to get this straight, sorry. How many rotations has Earth made? I had it right the first time, 15 Saturn days. So this is going to tell us Earth's rotations. 15 Saturn days, keep change flip, divided it by one half or times two is going to be 30 rotations. Ooh, sorry. That one got me all tripped up and tongue-tied. I had the right idea. I just couldn't explain it. So we have Earth completing a rotation. And every time Earth completes a rotation, Saturn is going about half. So how many rotations does Earth make? That means Earth is turning twice as fast, two times as fast as Saturn. I think that's it right there. All right, let's do some test prep on the back. Let's see if you would be ready for a test over this. Jake feeds some chickens one eighth of a bag of chicken feed each day. If he has eight bags of feed, how many days will the feed last? Which equation models that? He has eight whole bags and he's using an eighth of a bag each day. An eighth of a bag each day. So. Which one of these would model that situation? I'm gonna give you a moment to solve and mark your answer. How many days will he be able to feed them? I'm going with letter C. Eight bags divided by one eighth, he'll get 64 days of feed from those eight bags. Jake makes sure that each chicken has at least one half square yard for a nesting space. How many nesting spaces are available in 22 square yards? So if we have 22 square yards and he wants to divide that into half square yards, we would do keep change flip. How many nesting spaces? 22 times two would equal 44 nesting spaces. Check for reasonableness. Does that make sense? And it does. Good. Jake, yeah, Jake is doing a lot. He uses a 10 foot board to build a chicken coop. He needs to cut the board into half foot pieces. How many half foot pieces can he make from the 10 foot board? Write a division equation then write a multiplication equation to solve. He's got a 10 foot board right there. He wants to cut the board into half foot pieces. So we're taking that 10 feet, we're dividing it by one half foot to equal the number of pieces. So there's my division equation. 
my related multiplication equation would be heap, change, flip. He could get 20 pieces. All right, one more story. Clarissa has an eight gallon can of hydraulic fluid. Each tractor she services requires a third of a gallon of hydraulic fluid. How many tractors can Clarissa service with the hydraulic fluid that she has? She has eight gallon cans and, or she has an eight gallon can and she has to use a third of a gallon for each of those tractors. How many tractors can she service? So those eight gallons, I'm gonna go below because my lines are crazy. Eight gallons divided by one third is going to equal the number of tractors that she can service. So keep, change, flip. She can work on 24 tractors with that one eight gallon can. All right, for number 12 and 13, we just need to use our related multiplication equation. So we're going to do keep, change, flip for each of these. And again, I can do keep, change, flip and rearrange that a little bit so that I can put it in that order. All right, if we're going to divide down here for the spiral review, one, six divided by three, we can still do keep, change, flip. Remember, if we start with a fraction, we're going to end with a fraction. Keep, change, flip. There we go. And finally, find the product. Use that Columbia C for each of these. Two times two equals four plus one equals five halves times three times two equals six plus two equals eight thirds. I like to simplify first. You don't have to, but you do have to simplify at the end. Both of those two and eight are even numbers. I can divide by two. I would get an answer of 20 thirds, which would then equal six and two thirds. Ooh, there it is. All right. Okay, that is it. If you have questions about this lesson, um, make sure you bring them to class tomorrow. Otherwise, that's all I have for you today, and I will see you in our next class. Bye.